Now, Legolas' quick reflexes did not have a great showing yesterday, but I'm hopeful that today will be different. Let's cast some Night of the Reliquaries, folks. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today, in the spirit of Lord of the Rings, it's archery time, and we're gonna have some quick reflexes. Now, in yesterday's video, we tried this out in Hammer Time, and without kind of spoiling how the league went, Legolas' quick reflexes did not have the best showing. Check out the video if you want to see more. But today, I'm hopeful that in a shell with more creatures, that this deck is going to have the opportunity to pop off. I just don't think the creature count was high enough yesterday for that to really be the case. So this is the deck list that we're going to be messing around with today. Um, it's essentially an Abzan Depths deck list, um, very much kind of channeling a lot of the core of Maverick with the Green Sun Package, Knight of the Reliquary, Sylvan Libraries, and so on and so forth. So at our core, one of our primary ways to win is going to be assembling the Dark Depths combo with Thespian Stage, and with Elvish Reclaimer, Crop Rotation, and Knight of the Reliquary to assemble that, we should be pretty consistent at doing so. But beyond that, we can just make a large Knight of the Reliquary, protect it with these quick reflexes, and go. And I don't think I need to tell you that giving your Merit Lodge Hexproof with Split Second is, uh, is good. Um, yeah, that, that's just insane. This is just one of the best protection spells of all time for a large creature like that. I honestly don't have too much else to say about this deck list. Like, we splash black for Bowmasters because, like, Bowmasters is good. Uh, while the splash isn't just, like, fully free in this current metagame, it's not that bad. Although the Blood Moon decks are picking up in popularity because broadside uh, bombardiers are just so, so, so strong. I do want to show off one other alternative deck list, though. Um, this was a different build that 5 owed. Uh, this one, um, the slider is pushed more strongly towards like actually being full on Maverick, like a punishing Maverick build. Um, and I thought about playing this one today. But Urza Saga in the mana base alongside Wasteland had me nervous, and I wasn't sure if even cards like this, and I think they're off screen here. Oh no, this one doesn't actually have Yavimaya. JK. Um, well, I wasn't sure if those uh, were going to actually save the mana base. Although, I did really like the idea of having fourth Aerlingas uh, in a deck that looked like this one. Right, back to our primary deck list here. Three copies of Gaddock Teague is kind of wild. Um, this may be one of those things where like it'll make sense in practice once I'm like trying to specifically dodge something like a Leyline Binding or something like that, or like it'll be really good versus Beseech the Mirror combo. But like three is wild. Um, otherwise, we just have like nice generic, good like rock style sideboard cards. And we'll we'll see how the deck performs. Uh, if you like the other deck list and you want me to play it, donation queue always available. And if you end up wanting to mess around with this deck list, remember there's a link to Moxfield.com down below in the video description that has that. And if you want to buy any of these cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code Thravenu to save five percent on your order. Let's battle. All right, so. I have a crop rotation that can get me a Dark Depths. I have a Thespian stage. I have a removal spell for a Swords. I forgot to switch out my Swords to Plowshares, or sorry, my Plains Art, which is a punt. I think I'm going to go keep on this hand. There's just so much Delver floating excuse me, around right now. Ooh, that is a good card to play in the short term here, and one that I don't super care if it gets dazed. Let us reclaim. And I don't think we're anywhere near playing this card around Lightning Bolt. Grixis Triome. Got it. So there's the fourth color. Swords to Plowshares is in. 
Uh, sure. Uh, we'll just buy you and pass, holding up a Bowmasters. What's my opponent's three mana play? Teferi? I mean, that's pretty good. Like, actually quite awkward that I don't have the white available. So I'm going to let my opponent attack, and then we decide if this resolves. Like, we decide what to do with the trigger if this resolves. Fuck. <laughs> well, that's bad. Swords would have gotten forced anyway. Yikes. Really awkward that I can't play out both stage and swords something immediately. So I think we're into playing the Reclaimer. And we'll make some moves a little bit later on. Alright. We're just chilling. This trigger on the stack. What swords? A Leyline Binding. Sure. If I lose the creature, let's attempt to crop rotation. I think getting rid of the basic forest just before this draw happens. Dryad Arbor is cheeky. I don't think I do it. I think I just get the Dark Depths. Mox Diamond. Not what I'm looking for at this stage. This is the sort of spot where a Legolas's quick reflexes is just game winning. How are we doing it? I think so. Just doesn't feel good. Keep the one without counters. Make my 2020. You get a card. We see whether or not you are dead. Oh, they're dead. Holy shit. Uh, I thought we were going to settle in for a long and miserable game versus the Monarch. Hot damn. Uh, we take those. My cards, generally speaking, seem good. I don't know that I'm going to sideboard a lot here. Yadok Teague for Leyline Binding and Force of Will and Lorien Revealed is a thing. Assassin's Trophy for Leyline Binding is a thing. I think I'm into these. Or the Aerolingas puts some pressure on these, like, Swords to Plowshares to be something that I keep. I don't know that I want this when I have access to these and go down some swords to keep some to have outs to opposing creatures. Oh, we're a 61 card deck here. All right. One Assassin's Trophy. Keep the spread of Assassin's Trophy and swords reasonable. Eh. <laughs> okay, how bad is this actually, though? I'm not going anywhere fast, but I have four land drops that I can make and Wasteland to take out something like a Triome. This doesn't go anywhere fast, but maybe this is not as bad as my visceral reaction to it has me thinking it is. If we keep hitting lands off the top, though, it will be as bad as I think it is. Uh, we, we will just take out the first mana source here. I don't want beans to sneak into play. Do not want to roll that beautiful bean footage. Green Sun for Dryad Arbor off the table. There's only one. Um, slightly awkward. This is just fetch land and pass. It's fine. Like, we will play a, a large Knight of the Reliquary in the not too distant future. Sure, sure, sure. Drew the basic plans that I was thinking about fetching. Oh, well. Grab Forest. Green Sun for one. It's a force of will and a second force of will. That's fine. Um, this next turn cycle can be awkward if my opponent just like becomes the monarch. Aggressively attacked red on turn one. We'll see. Feels like my opponent just has it. In which case I'm going to just kind of be terminally behind. Yep. So I'm at 17. My opponent gets a one-sided howling mine. And I don't know that I'm going to be great at taking the Monarch back. Like, I haven't given my opponent Swords to Plowshares and, like, Leyline Binding targets yet. That's, that's a rough tempo hit. Sure. Uh, Bowmasters is actively good here. So now I need Black. Probably Bayou. Is sorcery speed bowmasters? Gah! That's rough. All right. Yeah, fourth Aerolingos is such a good card. 
I don't want to go like quite so far as format warping, but it's like one step short of that. It just gives control decks an absurd finisher and early source of card advantage that's kind of difficult to interact with. We're going to play a knight and a dryad arbor. That's two bodies that can potentially attack in and take the monarch next turn with swords backing them up. Just kind of annoying because I might have to leave a Teferi there. Yep. I would say where are my Legolas's quick, quick reflexes, but Teferi's in play, so not necessarily going to do its thing anyway. Sure. There's another land drop. Uh, and Uro is coming. Sure. Uh, easily will come back next turn. Got a swords for it. But my opponent is just probably going to have a wall of removal. And I can't instant speed. Do a cool thing. Um, do I have anything pre-combat that it makes sense to do? I could pre-combat get a Teague. That actually does some stuff. And might not be on my opponent's radar. All right. So I get a Teague. That stops Leyline Binding and Instant Speed Prismatic Ending. Try to poke my opponent. And I have swords. Gah. All right. Sure. There's Mystic Sanctuary. Or another Swords to Plowshares. Oh, this is awful. Yeah, my opponent should swords that before I have a chance to draw something like a Caracas that can defend it. And I can swords this. I think, oh, that's rough. Yeah. I think I'm probably one force of will away from just like never ever being able to be back in this game again. Uh, sure. I'm honestly a little surprised that that isn't just a draw three at this point. Oh, it's a new Uro. Yikes. My opponent at 35, having five cards in hand, active to fairy and monarch. I think it's probably time that I just accept that I am not winning this game. Like, we're, we're buried. And I don't think any one individual card gets me out of this anymore. Let's move on to the next game. I feel like I have approximately the correct ratio of cards. Opening hands aren't doing me favors, though. Like I know my last keep was a little sketchy, but god damn it. It does not have functional green mana. Like I just don't think I can play this as a land early on in this matchup, realistically. I think it has enough upside that I'll keep it, but I am just... Fully unhappy here. Maybe the deck doesn't have enough green sources. I DK. I think with this fetch on the stack, I'm just going to cast this card. Never give my opponent an opportunity to brainstorm in response to this. I always want to use this mana in this turn cycle. Because the second I have green mana, I need to be able to snap off these cards. Okay. So... Let's take out the Triome. And I imagine something happens here that results in... Oh, yeah. Love that for me. Very rewarded for playing out the Bowmaster in response to the fetch. Getcha. Opponent's at 15. I blow up that land. I get to attempt to swing in for 5, and it's probably happening. Nice. Um, opponent's at 10. I can't play Teague. I've made my land drop. Uh, Teague! Teague! That's super unfortunate. I mean, I guess I could have wastelanded the white source rather than the Triome. But, like, the Triome is red mana towards fourth Aerolingas, and I don't super expect there to be too many red sources. Damn it! This Teferi is, like, surprisingly rough. Thank you, deck. I am just kind of tripping all over myself with this deck here. Like, I currently have no spells that I can cast. It's turn six. 
All right, Teferi pluses again. Damn it. Thanks, deck. Just solemn thank you from me to you. Sure, I'm just going to take a random draw. Thanks, deck. Again. Very cool. Yep. Barry continues to plus. I don't really think there's any way that I win the game from here. Like, I am just terminally behind. I'm at manually tick down Dark Depths. I'm not going to concede because, like, there are these worlds where I just get kind of lucky and, and like, draw a Thespian stage and a green source. It's just instant speed fourth Aer Lingas. Oh, instant speed Lorien revealed. Sure. Sure. I'll discard a crop rotation. I just don't think I can risk that card. Like, I know there's a wasteland there, but I just don't think that I can risk it against a counter spell right now. Would you like to cast fourth Aer Lingas for a very large number and kill me? You would. That's fine. That was brutal. Today's video is sponsored by Eminence Gaming. Their command tower software that they use to run events is awesome. And in January, I'm going to be attending another one of their events, The Boil, uh, in Atlanta at Charlie's Collectible Show, which is, no joke, one of the coolest venues that I've ever played at. If you are interested in some CEDH and or meeting me, consider checking it out. All right, folks, due to some errors, the game footage for this round was lost. So I'm going to walk back through a replay here. Um, we're on the draw versus what is ultimately going to be a very strange blue-white control deck list. And from turn one, it's immediately obvious that something unusual is going on from my opponent's side of the battlefield. And in the early game here, I'm thinking that my opponent is going to be some sort of weird standstill deck, and I'm not really sure what exactly is going on. And I'm not going to figure it out for quite some time. The seal of removal that's sitting in play is kind of awkward for me and constricts a lot of the timing of when I can actually go and cast the spells that I'm trying to cast. And I'm just kind of doing this sad beatdown plan until we get to the point that the seal of removal is no longer in play. And then at that point, Dark Depths can be a real plan that we can use. But yeah, we're, we're just trying to be the beat down, and we do eventually force that seal out of play. We've got our opponent on a two-turn clock here when it comes to just raw creatures on board. Gaddic Teague is protecting from something like Terminus, and we fly in here. And we get hit by a Solitude, uh, which was pretty bad and something that I wasn't expecting here. Brings my opponent to four life, and I opt to just keep jamming bodies, rationalizing that with the Caracas on board, going for the Dark Depths kill is less good. And we get game one. For game two here, I'm going to be on the play, and I kind of start with some rough opening hand. Or sorry, I, I won that one. And opponent plays a Candy Trail, which is a bit of an odd one. And we get to go and just do a little bit of acceleration. Um, my mana is going to be a little awkward in this game. My opponent opts to March of Otherworldly Light, my Dryad Arbor, and then I lose this Sylvan Library. So with my opponent having multiple Wastelands, I now can't do a lot. And, oh, nope, I don't get to actually pause this. Oh, I do. Okay, there's the pause. So, if I know what this foretell, foretold card is, this game is very easy to win. But I don't. And that's going to come back to bite me a little bit later. Um, my opponent is doing something very strange and something that I don't really think they should be doing. Like, I don't think what they're doing is powerful enough by legacy standards. But my draw here is just so bad that I can't punish them. 
Like, to play around this wasteland, I have to turn this bayou into a basic plains, which time walks me. And from there, like, I'm attacking with a 1-2. Uh, it doesn't feel good. I tried to play that Dryad, or sorry, that Gaddock Teague around a removal spell there. Did not succeed. And holding up the Legolas's quick reflexes ends up being just, like, the nightmare of the rest of this match as, like, I kind of waffle back and forth between wanting to do it and not. Um, like, it looks real good right there. But, in, spoiler, in both games 2 and 3, I'm going to end up in these situations where I either get to play a threat or hold up Legolas's quick reflexes because I just stumble all over myself in terms of mana for both of the next couple of games. And I believe this next turn is where things are going to get weird. So my opponent wastelands my fetch and solitudes my Gaddock Teague in response. And this is where the cosmic intervention happens. So if a permanent they control would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, exile it instead. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So... I'm caught really off guard by this, and what I'm supposed to do right here is Swords to Plowshares this Solitude, but I miss it. And that means that they're going to get another Solitude, they're going to get another Fetch Land, they're going to get another Soul Guide Lantern. I don't get to immediately Legolas's Quick Reflexes, and then this shit happens. This allows them to sacrifice all of their land, gaining a bunch of life, and as we move to the end step here, all that stuff is going to come back. He'll end up fetching again in the middle there. I save my creature. I now realize that I have to Swords to Plowshares this Solitude. And they chip away at my graveyard, shrinking these Elvish Reclaimers. I take out the Solitude. And my opponent will get to gain all of that life again with the Zurin Orb. Because of this wording here. Like... The first part says this turn, and that second part is return them at the beginning of the next end step. So this was just something I wasn't expecting. I think if I knew this was coming, I could have played around it better, including that solitude thing. But the remainder of this game basically ends up being my opponent just kind of out-tempoing me here. And if you kind of look at the scale of this game, this game ends up being incredibly long, mostly because I'm stumbling all over my mana. The three color mana base with some colorless lands like the Dark Depths and Wastelands uh, really just betrays me this whole match. Like, it becomes very difficult for me to hold up Legolas's quick reflexes while also advancing my board. And additional copies of Solitude don't really help. I take a bunch of combat damage. And I'm just kind of in this really awkward spot. Where I end up trying to work toward the Dark Depths kill. And get just out-tempoed by what my opponent is doing. And their creatures just continue to bash in. Uh, at this point, more than anything else, I'm grinding little bits of clock off of them because I've realized, like, just how glacially slow their deck is. Like, this is turn 16, and I was just unable to put up a win because my deck stumbled all over itself here. So now we move on to game 3. I mulligan a terrible hand and keep a bad hand, and... Spoilers for this round, but again, just having a non-functional hand versus a very, very, very slow deck does not leave me in a good position. So I'm kind of forced to use this green sun to get an Elvish Reclaimer, and now I'm off curve, right? I didn't play my one drop on turn one, and that means that my opponent can just remove this around Legolas's quick reflexes. So... I'm in another awkward spot where because my opponent has played Urza's Saga, I can't 
just hold on to Dark Depths. Because if I hold the Dark Depths Thespian stage combo, I will just run into Pithing Needle. But if I play it out like this, then I can just run into effects like Aether Spellbomb. My opponent has Brazen Borrower anyway, uh, and then I get Wastelanded off of green, and life is terrible. Because I've gotten Wastelanded again, I'm off curve. I try to hold Gaddic Teague for a turn, hoping to be able to hold up Legolas's quick reflexes when I play it, but it doesn't happen. My opponent plays a Teferi, bounces Gaddic Teague, and my Gaddic Teague gets Force of Willed. And at this point, I'm not even going to play out the rest of the round. Uh, I don't play another meaningful spell for, I think, the next nine turns. I think the game ends on turn 16 with me still just, like, having all of these cards in hand. Uh, it was just an absolutely terrible round where my, my deck just did not function. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Just the best place to host your deck lists online. Just full period. It is. And I can say lots of nice things about them. Or I can just show you that I have 328 deck lists on this site, and I think that's about the best endorsement that I can give them. Round three. Not happy with this deck. I am just fully confident of that at this point. I don't like this deck. Like, am I supposed to keep this because I can tutor for Dark Depths when I just have, like, two terrible lands in hand? Like, I have my entire combo. I have a piece of interaction. It... Feels like this is a five card hand that I'm maybe supposed to keep. I think I'm going to try to do better. Immediately be punished by my three color mana base. Have to go to five. Yep. We are. We are sure. <laughs> playing cards. Yavamaya. So we're either playing a mirror or a pseudo mirror where my opponent gets to go first. And I don't like that. We do get to play our white source as a savannah, though, so I guess that's cool. You can also sack this flagstones at will um, with Sylvan Self Safekeeper if that's something that ends up mattering. Sure. Uh, Mox Diamond is probably the best draw in the whole deck, honestly. Just, like, no joke. It's incredibly strong here. I will still fetch. I want to grow the old graveyard. I think this is a forest so that my opponent can't get rid of their own Yavamaya with Elvish Reclaimer and grow their stuff. Or sorry, I, I rephrase that. Um, so they can't get rid of Yavamaya and take me off green if I grab like basic planes here. Uh, there's a good chance that my opponent just Dark Depths combos me before I get Wasteland online. Oh, nope, they're gonna grind with flagstones. That's probably fine for me. All right. I have to keep in mind that crop rotation is a thing that exists. We are gonna grab a knight and pass the turn. I don't think I get to be attacking here. I think this just has to be held up as a safety net. Yeah. A basic planes. So if I would like, I can wasteland my opponent at this moment. I'll let them make their decision for the reclaimer first. It's just a savanna. I think I'm okay with sacrificing this land to grab a wasteland and just wasteland this thespian stage now. And just kind of keep them off the pieces. I don't want to run into this situation where they can just wasteland my wasteland and then make Dark Depths Thespian stage in response. I think I'm just trying to clock my opponent in two turns. Uh, yeah, I will respond. Uh, attempt to give that Shroud. Sacrificing this land. Yes, pick up a Savannah, I think. Possible there's a second wasteland coming. There is. I will give the second knight shroud. And now my goal here is to just two turn my opponent with knight. I guess Bojuka Bog's a problem. Yeah, if my opponent has game one Bojuka Bog. And these aren't as big as I want them to be. 
fine if I draw any land. Well, maybe not any land. Any forest or plains. So, if my opponent has game one Bojukabog, and I attack in with these knights, I lose one knight. That is incredibly awkward. Oh, I hate this. I think I just have to pass the turn. I think I don't play Caracas. I just hide that land. Alright. Alright, they're just going for more flagstones. Ugh. Yeah, this is dreadful. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it doesn't really help my situation, though. Now this Elvish Reclaimer just gets to grind while I take no game actions. <sighs> this deck doesn't feel good. Sure. Chunking a Dryad Arbor. Uh, yep. And I have no game actions I can take meaningfully. I have a bog of my own. I do have a bog of my own that I can't get because this is not an appropriate land type. Cool, cool, cool. And like, I can just see my own death. Like at this point, my opponent can get a Dark Depths. Like, copy it before I have a chance to interact. My knights were smaller than my opponent's knights, so it's not like I could really use the removal side of this well. All right, they're just holding. Yeah, so I can delay things by one turn by playing Caracas, but then my opponent just gets Wasteland and the same pattern happens. Yes, I'll make them do it. But I am just feeling this. Like, maybe I'm supposed to just make the hard call like five turns ago or whatever that my opponent does not have game one Bojukabog. But I think they're supposed to have game one Bojukabog. Yeah, there's the Wasteland. Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm just going to be playing the worst version of my opponent's deck because I have an extra color, and so my mana is worse. Gaddick Teague can become an Assassin's Trophy. I'll play a second one. Bowmasters isn't actually all that good in this matchup. Let's get rid of those, and I'll play two copies of Endurance to round things out to help uh, the size of Elvish Reclaimer and Knight of the Reliquary. Okay. So... Mox Diamond. Um, the hand's going to be a keep. I do an Elvish Reclaimer on turn one. I think I get rid of the Yavamaya. Not 100% certain here. Let's grab Reclaimer. But, like, I just feel like this deck's so bad. Like, what happens when my opponent just source the plowshares this? Like, the whole hand falls apart. Crop Rotation. Sure. For white. Yeah. So Source of Flash is my creature. My whole hand falls apart. Thank you. Um, okay. I guess we play Knight and attempt to double Wasteland in the next turn cycle. Rather than Wasteland and hold up Swords immediately. Sure. Sylvan Library. That sure does make Wastelanding feel a lot worse. Oh, um... Huh. Huh. All right. Thespian stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep that one. Make a 2020. Sacrifice this. Get Wasteland. Knock my opponent off white. It's possible that holding up Sajiri Step is better, but. Or sorry, Wasteland them off of green. It's possible that Sajiri Step is better. Um, we just got there. The rationale for taking that aggressive line is that it, it just presents my opponent with an immediate answer this or you win while leaving me with an 8-8 eight, eight, that is a three-turn clock with a second wasteland backup. Kind of felt like I got lucky that game, though. Like, my, my lands in this deck don't cast my spells. Like, do I keep this, just play flagstones into flagstones? So that I can get that next green mana. I hate this. I know I've said that 77 times, but I am down on this deck. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Ugh. I have swords up as a tempo play. But yeah, just don't reasonably get to cast my spells. 
This is the world's worst green fixing. All right, no plays from my opponent. Probably means that they are sitting on a handful of removal of their own. Library. Well, my hand sucks. So I'm down with that. I don't know that I'm actually going to get to draw cards off of this. Sure. You have an endurance of your own? A Boseju. Uh, yes, I will use this ability. And no matter what I pick up, I can't actually Assassin's Trophy in this turn cycle. That's probably more green. I don't think I care about the Dryad Arbor. Sure. All right, there's a Knight. Possible my opponent has a Legolas's Quick Reflexes of their own. Negative. All right. So I can play this with Legolas's Quick Reflexes up. I think I saved the Bojuka Bog for a little bit longer. Uh, sure. Cast Endurance. Dunk your graveyard. Now I've got a creature that can start attacking. I can play this as a removal spell on Triad Arbor. That doesn't seem important. Bash in with a 3 4. Uh, sure. You're going to nuke my graveyard. I guess I bully their endurance. I am planning on doing fair beatdown stuff here. And, like, because my mana's so bad, I actually can't, like, play multiple spells now despite my mana. But despite having the correct amount of mana. Like, I can't Endurance now. I think we are in Thanks I Hate It territory. I think since I have another Endurance, I just make this land drop, but it... Everything just feels awkward. Yeah, yep, yeah, nope, yep. All right, there's a knight. Maze of Ith sucks for me. I guess I use this to kill my opponent's knight. A split second, so it just occurs. And um, deal the damage to knight. Sure. <sighs> my spirit is broken. Sure. That's now multiple Maze of Iths that I have to work through. I don't think I can play my Endurance here. Like, I think I have to hold it to keep the opposing Knight of the Reliquary in check. A little bit later on, my attacks aren't good anymore. My opponent can work towards Dark Depths combo. Sure. Yep. They don't go for it immediately. Maze of Ith can also be defensive in a really annoying way. Yep. Thanks, Dryad Arbor. Very cool. I've got Elvish Reclaimer that I can search up for some degree of utility. Yeah. But the land I get off Elvish Reclaimer enters the battlefield tapped. Which is obviously not the best. And my opponent can just find a wasteland to check whatever I get with Elvish Reclaimer. So it's really just the illusion of having interaction rather than actually having interaction. I don't think I'm supposed to just take 20 damage and go to one with my opponent having three bodies in play. All right. Sacrifice the flagstones. I lose my creature. Sweet. So now I can't try twice like what I actually need to do. Uh, pick up a land. I guess my opponent could make a mistake. They did not. Yeah. Yep. Now I can play this. Shrink that knight. But if I don't draw an out here on this draw, I'm dead. Or I guess I technically can have another turn. I can hold these creatures back so that Sejiri Step doesn't just kill me. Oh, joy. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. Yep. So there's the protection. I take 20. I can't draw additional cards off of Sylvan Library. I can use it for selection, but, like, one card doesn't beat this. Yeah, like, my Sword of doesn't beat that. 
This is miserable, folks. Like, when I look at the opening hands of this deck, I just wonder what I'm supposed to do. Like, am I supposed to keep turn one swords to plowshares, turn three knight of the reliquary with half a combo and a bad situational ETB tapped land? Like, I'm just dead if I am playing versus combo, and like, this might not be good enough for a fair deck either. All right, land pass. Maybe playing against initiative. I'm going to preemptively fetch basic planes because based on my luck in this league, if I don't, I would draw it. I don't draw a play. I fast turn. All right. Play your card. I will search the plowshares it. I will play Knight of the Reliquary. You'll like fury it. I'll get mad. Archon's fine. We will sword that at end of turn. And play a knight. Knight is still in range of red removal. But if I don't play it, I'm only using one of my three available mana this turn. And I think I just have to play knight to attempt to wasteland in the following turn cycle. Life's real good if my opponent doesn't pull extremely far ahead this turn. They can pull a little bit ahead. But they need to pull way ahead this turn. Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. All right. I am going to lose to Fury. And I have no agency because my deck is bad. All right. More mana acceleration. Pitching a Fable. He's in Dungeoneer. That's pretty bad for me. Also, do I have exactly two basics in this deck? I think I do. So even if I take the in <laughs> So even if I take the initiative, it just like doesn't super matter, right? Planes forest, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Play land. Play Mox Diamond. Discard Bog Pass. And I get to go for a merit lodge in this turn cycle. My opponent just should go to Lost Well to play around this and look for a piece of white removal if they already don't have one. Like, everything that I can do is just telegraphed on board. Yep. Uh, bottom, bottom. That's at least a good sign. All right, a spirit guide got pitched to play a fable. Opponent is leaving up three mana for a second fable. Um, I don't think they see what is about to happen. So, they reveal Touch the Spirit Realm. They, uh, really would like to have right now. And they have one card in hand, so it can't be, uh, Solitude plus white card. Activate. I guess I'll, uh, get rid of the Savannah. Find Dark Depths. That's main stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters, and get our opponent dead. Sure. Send him. Alright, our opponent died. So I guess we're keeping Legolas's quick reflexes for Touch the Spirit Realm and Solitude. What else am I doing? Static Teague can probably go. Bowmasters are medium. They really only impact Fable. I think I'm going to Force of Vigor. Think answering chalices and blood moons can matter. And I might just need the flexibility of Assassin's Trophy. I'm probably not directly searching that out most of the time, just given the speed of this matchup. Uh, this seems okay. I don't think endurance is crazy talk either, but I don't see the slots to remove it. So I've got a hand. It's not dead to a blood moon. I have three removal spells. No plan to win. I think I I keep. It just feels like every hand that this deck produces is bad in some capacity. All right, not chalicing. It's white. Oh no, it's just some initiative creature. Sure. And that stabilizes my opponent's mana. Okay. This. This. Discard that. Pass. Going to have them commit to going to Forge, and then I think I remove this creature. Alright, they're gonna scry. 
Pretty unlikely my opponent has a second touch the spirit realm here, so I'm just going to fire this off immediately. Try went one top, one bottom, FYI. Archon. Sure. Uh, that's fine. So, here's what we're doing. We're getting dry at Arbor. Oh, this isn't actually going to work. Can't Assassin's Trophy this thing because this land would enter tapped. Uh, so I don't get to attempt to just immediately steal the initiative. That is most unfortunate. Yeah. All right. We got a 4 4 knight. Oh, we are going for the rare goad on Dryad Arbor. I don't actually think that's particularly good because I can just Knight of the Relic Quarry turn that into something else or tap it for mana. I don't really think that's going to get you to where you want to be. Wow, Archon Attack. Sure. It seems like holding the initiative is currently incredibly important. Opponent intentionally goaded. Guess there's dead gone to think about. I can play Yavamaya to be able to Assassin's Trophy off these two. I think I just crash in with both. All right, show me your trick. Oh, no trick. Cool. I like no trick. I get a forest. Last turn? Yes. The Archon comes in. This does give my opponent more mana. But I think I've just got to hold the initiative here. Alright, they get a basic planes. Alright. Uh, this is 5 mana. It's potentially a solitude that can be held up. I don't think that's a problem when I have crop rotation available. Uh, so we're just going to continue to put this out of range of red removal. I think I just want this available. I think I just battle in with this and leave Dryad Arbor back. I think this dry, this crop rotation is defending this rather than working towards combo. Like, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like I am on the air beatdown plan with trap coming. I'm having a really hard time reading what's in my opponent's hand. Is it just all lands? Uh, if that's the case, cool. Trap. Take five. Put you to nine. Green Sun is interesting. Play that. Nuke that. Do I have Sylvan Safekeeper in the deck right now? Nope. Okay. Just gonna continue to attack in with this. Just want to, like, fully invalidate a Solitude. And we do this for X is 3. That taps Dryad Arbor. Leaves crop rotation up. Gets second night. Didn't run into something weird. And I don't think I take the risk of just going for the kill on that previous turn by crop rotating for a fetch land. Like, I just want to protect these creatures from removal. Uh, we won a match, but I feel like my opponent just didn't do much this game. Like, they played two spells. It's turn six. They have a billion mana in play and got to scry. I mean, we take those, but eh. All right. Keep. I, I think I've just decided that I'm going to be unhappy with every hand that this deck can produce, so I'll keep the sevens. Like, I'm, I'm not a particularly fast combo hand. I need to get a basic forest. I knock myself off of black for bowmasters. Not going to be great at playing around days. Yeah, uh, so... When I fetch this basic forest, I will knock myself off of black for Bowmasters. Cool, cool, cool. Forest. Teague. All right, cool. Finding Scrubland. Scrubland is a relative rarity. Sure. It's like a black-white initiative deck. What are we doing? So I either get knocked off of my combo or I get knocked off of Knight. Oh, are we literal scamming? Yeah, we're ephemerating. I lose the knight as well. My hand does nothing. Fantastic. Orcish Bowmasters. Hey, YouTube viewer, do you remember a turn ago when I said that my mana was bad and then I fucking drew the Orcish Bowmasters and lost my goddamn mind?
Pepperidge Farm fucking remembers. Pepperidge Farm doesn't forget your fucking mana bases. <sighs> Two. Eighteen. Now the Bowmasters get fucking taken. Oh, sure. Uh, wait. Oh, you're just gonna make it the ring bearer? Oh, and then you're gonna blink that. Sure. Uh, this only returns permanence. So this just lets the ring bearer loot. Um, I get it. But I'm sitting here looking at the removal spell for your creatures. And going, like, was this the best line? Like, just ephemerating the grief again, holding this. Largely seems better to me than what's happening. Despian stage immediately. Planners tapped. Ah! Hate everything. Like, I can Thespian stage, copy flagstones, and then get black that way. I can Thespian stage, get scrubland, but, like, all these things just result in my opponent being able to disrupt it with wasteland. Sure. Don't have a real block. We have 13. Yes, target scrub. Yeah. <sighs> cool. Wasteland pass, upkeep wasteland. I guess. Doesn't feel good. Take out a land, or at least attempt to. Could be another Samwise or an Ephemerate or something. Yeah. That returns that land. Invalidating my wasteland. Looting gets to continue to happen. Still can't block. Well, there's stage and depths. All right. My opponent started to pay costs on something and then didn't. I think they have swords to plowshares for this dark depths. All right. They blink this. They go to the last stage of that, uh, which is pretty awful for me. Now this grief is essentially attacking for six. Yep. Sure. I'm at seven, then four. Reanimate a troll on top of that. You got it. So now I don't even know that what I'm doing here is good enough. Swords to Plowshares Troll. Play Bowmasters in response to Grief Attack Trigger. Probably ends up being okay. Do I play Dark Depths this turn to add additional confusion, or do I hold that for a turn cycle? Probably hold that for a turn cycle and don't expose it. Alright. It's optional. It is not. Fantastic. All right, everybody's coming in. Play Orcish Bowmasters. King Grief. King Grief. Swords. Swords Troll here. Guess I should have pinged Samwise. That guaranteed takes a body out if I get swords to like I was thinking about. That's another one. The illusion of choice. It doesn't matter because I don't have two bodies anymore. So grief just gets through and kills me. Yep. Uh, yeah. I tripped over my own mana and died, and I saw it coming, and there was just nothing I could do. Endurance seems okay. Additional removal spells are fine. Surgical is something I can consider. My opponent probably has Bowmasters of their own, making Sylvan Library not the greatest, but... Library is, in theory, very good against, like, the grief sort of stuff that picks apart my hand in the early game. I think these are going. I also kind of think I need Surgical. I have four, six removal spells for a troll, two Endurances to stop them. I think I need these. Does that mean I'm going down on these? Maybe I just get rid of all those fucking things and play a green-white deck. Despite the fact that this can, like, do some things versus my opponent. Every hand's bad. Every hand's bad. Like, I get Savannah and Dryad Arbor some portion of the time. I either lose Sylvan Library to Grief or lose Dryad Arbor to 
just a source of plowshares. Either way, the hand is just dead in the water if either one of those things happens. I can't keep this. What the fuck? <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Get rid of Dryad Arbor. I think I have to get rid of this. I, I think I just get Thought Seized or Grief and just lose even more if this is gone. Because I just am not in a place where I can hold it up for the first turn cycle where it matters. Swords. Yeah. And it's off a of basic, so I can't fucking wasteland either. Tilt. Play this pass. Lock into Thespian Stage as my next draw. Present a win. Sure. Yeah, just take your fetch land back. That's fine. Wasteland still does nothing. So I can do this. Or X is one and pick up a reclaimer that's small. I guess that's what we're doing. And then we can fish up a Thespian stage. This is starting to be the portion of the game where Legolas's swift reflexes would be good. Um, no, I can't take that block. Sure. An opponent will fetch so they can get the fetch land back again. Stay on basics so my wasteland has no text. Uh, okay. Well, that's a draw. This is where I wish I had the Legolas's swift reflexes. Uh, protect from a Swords to Plowshares effect. We'll have to work towards a win a little more slowly, I think. Sure. We'll take that too. I just need to work towards having enough mana. So this is 1, 2, stage, activate. With one more land drop. I can just do this all much more safely. So I have Assassin's Trophy in here. Yes, meaning I want that. My opponent is playing something else here. An Orcish Bowmasters. I guess I have two Orcish Bowmasters or a Flicker. Yeah, two Orcish Bowmasters, sure. All right, so I lose Reclaimer. That means picking up another Flagstones isn't as necessary. I now can't do my whole Dark Depths thing with protection. Just get another half of a combo piece for later, for when I have to try again. Uh, green Sun's cool. Kill and Safekeeper? Kill and Safekeeper's pretty good. Not perfect, because my opponent is a Bowmaster's deck. But I think trying to go now makes sense. I'm in fact maybe supposed to Sorcery Speed make this, so that Wasteland doesn't disrupt. Yeah. Let's make this now. My opponent can't draw a post-combat wasteland and disrupt what I'm doing. Now they loot. I'm fine blocking something that doesn't, like, come back from the graveyard. I've got four lands. Good luck. All right. We are forced to play another game with this deck. I'm on the draw. I don't think I want this library anymore. Do I want Bowmasters for Bowmasters now? Do I keep the Surgicals? They're bad if the game plays out like that one just did. Maybe they don't have enough of an impact when my opponent can on the play. Just like Grief, take the Surgical. Grief, take a real card. Go down one Endurance on the draw. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Maybe. It's not like it's the best blocker versus, uh, like, Samwise Flicker evasion nonsense. All right, here we are. Another unkeepable opening hand that produces no meaningful mana. Okay. This is a reasonable Magic the Gathering hand. I cannot throw back any of the lands. And from here, a lot of it is like... Am I getting griefed on turn one? If I'm getting griefed, I want all three threats. If I'm getting trolled, I want this Swords to Plowshares. I think I'm going to get rid of this. And we'll see what my opponent's got. Alright, it's Grief Ephemerate. Alright, so I lose a threat. Ephemerate. 
I'll probably lose the second threat, and it'll let me sword as their creature. And then grief is a three for one. And my hand does nothing. All right, they took the swords instead. I have no valid play until turn three. We'll take on a good chunk of damage from the grief by then. It's possible I'll also lose the knight to a discard spell by then. Or, like, they just take the knight this turn and give up three damage, which is brutal. Er, they don't get to attack. Uh, this technically gives me a playable card for this turn cycle. It just feels really bad to Assassin's Trophy a grief. But, like, knowing that my opponent is just, like, playing these Ephemerate and Samwise effects. Oh, I can't Assassin's Trophy. What am I talking about? My deck doesn't cast spells with mana. Fuck. <laughs> I'm so upset right now. Sure. There's a reanimate on my knight, which means my opponent gets a wasteland machine. My removal spell can't remove creatures. Can't cast that spell either, deck. Damn it. Actually, um, I messed up. I'm supposed to copy a basic swamp before my opponent uh, untaps with knight. Yep. Sure. I think I just have to respond right here and do it. Then I've got Assassin's Trophy on Knight lined up. Sure. Uh, there's recruiters in there. Getting Orcish Bowmasters. Makes my own Orcish Bowmasters worse. Despite being on four mana, I'm probably not going to be able to double spell. Um, that's reasonable. Ah. Uh. Does my opponent have a Caracas in their deck? Probably, given that they're a fucking Samwise deck. <clears throat> so let's make this land drop. Assassin's Trophy, my own knight. Gives my opponent the basic. I'm facing down four damage this turn. At least six damage the following turn cycle. How about we just draw Legolas's quick reflexes, huh? Just, like, one time at an appropriate spot. Okay. That's awkward with the Bowmasters around. But it's happening. The past turn. Opponent Bowmasters. Targets this. Thespian stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. Keep my Safe Keeper. Target Merit Lodge. Sack. Lanes? I just always want forest, I think. Yes, get white black mana here. The shrouded, invalidating the Orcish Bowmaster trigger, keeping my opponent from getting the token. It seems like we're good. My opponent has one white mana currently, three cards in hand. And I beat a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, you get that attack for sure. No block. All right, my opponent sat there thinking for a little while and then realized that they have no outs. We pick up wins in the last two rounds, but this was an awful league to play. So I'm not going to lie to you. I had such high hopes for this card. Like, it can do some absolute nonsense, you know, just like untapping that Knight of the Reliquary for double activations in a turn, uh, acting as a removal spell, a split second no. And in reality, what ended up happening with this card was that I didn't have the mana up at the appropriate time, or I would just like draw it too early in the game, bottom it to a mulligan because like it just isn't good in the early turns of the game and on top of that like the mana base for this deck sucks like it's a three color deck that has dark depths and wasteland and thespian stage and a number of situational lands that only make one of your colors of mana I, I tripped all over myself during this league, unable to cast my spells, even like foreseeing the problem, like knowing it was there, not being able to play around it or playing around it to the best of my ability. And I just I just couldn't. And that was very frustrating. 
And this is two decks, two leagues in a row where Legolas's quick reflexes being in the deck was not the bee's knees. It was just not something that made a major difference as opposed to some other threat, some other piece of interaction, some other piece of protection. Like, I conceptually understand the ceiling of this card, and I don't feel like I saw that ceiling over 10 rounds. Like, maybe to some extent, like, this is better if you just play a green-white depths deck list and you remove the strain of the black mana from the mana base, being able to fit a couple more basics into the, the deck list or whatever. But, like, I, I just don't know that I think this deck is good, more generally speaking. My Elvish Reclaimers were almost never 3-4s. The build has two flagstones, so, like, sometimes I can grind that value. I, I just felt like every opening hand that I opened all day was just terrible. Maybe I'm playing this deck wrong to, to some extent. Like, I, I know that I made some active mistakes in this league, but I, I think this deck let me down. I do like the Gaddock Teague deck tech so like i think if i have one thing positive to say about that it like conceptually in the deck tech i wasn't thinking about like exactly how much this stops in like a beans deck like stopping the fourth air lingas and the prismatic endings because they have x in the cost in addition to like terminus supreme verdict lorian revealed force of will i think that does a lot i like that tech but that's all i like <sighs> Well, we made it. It's the end of the video. And I think you know better than to go to the Moxfield link in my video description and try this deck out for yourself. But hopefully you do know that if you need any of these cards, Cool Stuff Inc. has you covered, and promo code THRAVENU will get you a little discount. I... I'm gonna go do something that's not magic for, like, two days. Then we can come back and play some more magic. Alright, have a great rest of the day. See ya.